The state of the film industry has been derided by many in the last few years, with people tired of Hollywood regurgitating the same content repeatedly. With forced ideals and messages preached to you, or mindless franchise films, choosing spectacle over substance, American audiences are beginning to discover alternative forms of entertainment. Whether it be American films produced outside of Hollywood's influence, or foreign works, non-Hollywood films are gaining traction. Boosting audience interest in foreign films are streaming services such as Netflix, which has licensed thousands of hours worth of content from overseas sources. One such film that has caught the attention of American audiences is RRR, an Indian Telugu language film. RRR has been making waves, receiving one of the largest releases for a Tollywood film in both India and worldwide. The film caught the attention of critics who have highly praised it. It has shown in IMAX theaters overseas and in limited Cinemark XD theaters in America, before finally landing on Netflix where audiences have fallen in love with it. But what is it about RRR that has made it such a success? Telling a fictional story about two real-life Indian revolutionaries, Alori Sitrama Raju, played by Ram Charan, and Kumaram Bhim, portrayed by Rama Rao, in their fight against the British Raj, the British force which occupied India from 1858 to 1947. The film highlights an undocumented period of time in which not much was known about each figure and imagines them as having met prior to their historic works. The movie itself is full of what most American audiences think of in regard to Bollywood slash Tollywood filmmaking. Action and set pieces are over the top, laden with explosions and ridiculous special effects, many of which are plagued with poor CGI. There is melodrama and dance numbers and tons of camp and humor. There is also, however, charm, a genuine look at serious themes such as friendship and sacrifice and fighting for freedom. Yes, there are over-the-top title cards and laughable moments with every action sequence, but much of this is also part of the culture of Indian filmmaking. And I never felt the film tried to take these moments too seriously. Yes, there's camp, but much of it is done for sheer entertainment. It may seem silly, hell, a lot of it is silly, but the excess complements the film more than it detracts. Even in its most melodramatic moments, including a best friend montage and overacted scenes of anguish and joy alike, much of the overtop nature complements rather than detracts. Acting ranges from serious to melodramatic or campy, just like everything else in the film, but the two leads never feel inauthentic, with camp coming in moments that are meant to evoke laughter, serious acting where needed, and again, over the top performances while somewhat goofy still effectively driving home the point in an overtly entertaining way. The drama gets the point across about the struggle for freedom against British occupancy, and it hypes up audiences when the heroes fight back. And while it all seems like a frantic mess, the film really isn't as all over the place as it feels. Yes, sometimes there are random fights between a wild tiger, but generally each scene, whether it be serious, campy, or even a dance number, is geared toward furthering the plot. Ultimately, RRR is like a puzzle where none of the pieces match, yet they still fit together to make an amazing picture. It works, it's fun, it has enough character development and emotion to keep you invested, and most of all, it entertains. It won't attract all audiences. The style of Indian filmmaking will not appease all audiences, and many may find it too different or bizarre. Even still, RRR has found an American and worldwide audience, and will continue to do so because it offers something Hollywood has forgotten, a fun, entertaining experience that doesn't preach at you and still has substance while being unique. I give RRR three out of four stars.